My PhD is in behavioral medicine. And just to show you a little bit of, of the history here, behavioral medicine quickly changed its name to health psychology because instead of just treating illness, we were going to promote wellness. This was about 32 years ago when I came to Presby as a student. And one of the first things I did when I got here was I designed a stress management program for the cardiac uh, center. And it was a really nice, short, eight-hour program. And about uh, 10 years later, we needed to cut it down because the world was starting to move faster. So we cut it down to four hours. And then about 10 years ago, they were like, four hours, that's crazy. So we cut it down to one hour. And now it's uh, 12 minutes. So <laughs> 10 years from now, I better be retired. Um, I want to talk to you briefly about why is this important. You've heard a lot about it already today. This is going to tie a lot of what you've already heard together. And then I want to share with you a variety of things you can do to improve your coping. Um, you can listen to it. You can get entertained by all this today. But unless you take something away from today, from any one of these talks, and actually make a change in your life, it, it's a wasted day. So really, as you're going through this, what can you do differently? We've talked about prescriptions. How do you know if you're having signs of too much stress? Um, sleeplessness. Um, usually it's the uh, difficulty falling asleep is anxiety. If you wake up every night, two to three o'clock, have a hard time going back to sleep, it's depression. Chemistry-wise, they're pretty similar to each other. Changes in appetite. Um, I consider the lucky ones, those who lose their appetite when they get stressed. Uh, the rest of us, we, we tend to eat too much. Um, irritability or negative attitude can be a sign of excessive stress if it's not your normal personality. Um, <laughs> headaches, back aches, all kinds of pains. And so if you really look at all medical problems are indeed stress related. Um, I think we overdid one, here we go. There's, oh, feeling out of control is something I hear from all the patients uh, that I treat over the years. Sometime during the first hour, the reason they're there now is they feel out of control, family, work, or something. Impaired concentration, you heard Wendy talk about it, you've heard others talk about it. I'm also a neuropsychologist, and so the good news is some of the people we were assessing to see if they had Alzheimer's didn't. They had stress-related medical problems and concentration difficulties. And then another big sign and symptom is letting little stuff get to you. Uh, Wendy talk, talked about how she would have these, these reactions. And part of it is, is the cognitive part. And I just wanted to give a di different wording to what some other people have already said today. An example that I always like to use is one from my own life. I was preparing a stress talk. I'm so good at this. I'm really the expert. And I couldn't come up with the right slide. I was drawing them out. And I would go, wow, that's, that's horrible. And I'd wad it up and I'd throw it in the trash. And I'd, I'd try again. I'm working on this for about a half an hour. And finally, I wadded up this piece of paper and I threw it at the trash can. And it landed right on the edge of the trash can. It just kind of hung there forever and landed on the floor. And I jumped up out of my chair and I'm like, God damn, life sucks. <laughs> I mean, nothing ever goes right. Oh, oh, what a great example. Okay. So I've been using that now for about 30 years. Um, it was a piece of paper, right? On, on a good day, you just pick it up, you put it back in the trash. But this was like the end of the world uh, because I, I was too stressed out. All right, there is good stress and there's bad stress. One of the reasons I want you to, to hear this is because everybody, including me, has a limit. Okay, And so when we're doing treatment for stress, there, there's really how much can you tolerate and how much do you have? And so you have to get rid of bad stress or what most of people do is they get rid of good stress. They spend all their time dealing with the bad stuff. And so one story briefly, a guy came to see me early in my practice and this, this struck a chord because he was probably about my same age. And he came in and he said, Dr. Hafer, uh, I've been having these headaches. I went, do you have any stress in your life? He said, oh no, no, life's perfect. So what do you mean life's perfect? Oh, I just I graduated last year, married my sweetheart, we moved to Dallas, I've already got a promotion, she's pregnant, we got a new car, and everything's great. And his voice just kept getting higher and higher. Right? He didn't see good stuff as stress. And so it's all the stress. 
And we've got to take care of ourselves to enjoy the good stuff. Uh, here's one that, that was going to probably uh, uh, be really brief because you've heard about it. You know, when you stress out, your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure goes up, right? It goes away. All the blood goes away from your intestines, so you get all these GI problems. The blood leaves your skin because, again, you're in danger, right? And so one of the things that happens when you're stressed is your hands get really cold, right? Um, and so you'll notice I'm wearing this really fancy 1970s mood ring. Wow, it's fully adjustable. Okay, one lucky person's gonna win this at the end of the talk. So, got your attention now, don't I? All right, what does stress do to you? It causes all kinds of psychological, medical, and cognitive problems. Go back there, thank you. Men and women are different. I want to be really brief here, but part of what I want you to hear in the second half of what I'm going to talk about is everybody needs to kind of learn how to do their own way to cope. Men and women respond differently. You heard, again, other people talk today about adrenaline, cortisol, the blood pressure. That happens to all of us during a stress response. But men, when they're under stress, they also get an increase in testosterone. You take anybody and you start injecting testosterone and they start becoming more aggressive and isolative, right? Leave me alone or I'll hit you. <laughs> Women, on the other hand, start getting stressed and they get an increase in a hormone called oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone. It's the one right after childbirth. So women under stress want to do what? They want to get together and talk and... <laughs> yeah. this, this is the whole key to uh, marriage. <laughs> Guys, you've got to learn that you do have to kind of pause and talk. And women, you kind of got to let them have a little break once in a while. All right. Now, the point is, though, everybody responds a little differently. Some of it is biological, some of it's cognitive. You've got to find what works for you. Keys to reducing stress, all right. So from this menu, you've got to pick something you're gonna work on in life. Um, attend to your early warning signs. If you don't know your early warning sign for when you're starting to get too much stress, ask the person next to you. Everybody that knows you can tell you. Oh, you get that grumbly stomach, or your shoulders do this, or you, your face turns red, or you start cursing, or whatever. Um, we're usually the last ones to know. Sustain a healthy diet. I think we've heard this today, have we not? All right? Sustain a healthy diet. Maintain an active lifestyle. That's, that's code for exercise. Right? Practice good sleep hygiene. A lot of people will tell me, oh, I, I, I do fine on four or five hours a night, you know. And then what do you do on Saturday? Well, I sleep all day. So most of us, and again, people vary between six to nine hours. Um, I actually need about seven. My wife needs about nine. So I get a lot of good reading done. Um, find support groups and friends. And so I love support groups. I love friends. But here's, here's the key. If you go to a support group and it's a bunch of people bitching and moaning, that's not a support group. At the end of about an hour and a half, they all leave because they're really mad at each other, okay? So a support group, friends, what you wanna do is you wanna talk about concerns and worries, but can you do anything about it? No, well then let's not talk about that. Let's talk about what can we do? How can we get better? How can we improve? It's not just a, a moaning and groaning opportunity. Likewise with journaling. We love journaling in psychiatry. Um, but don't just sit there at the end of the day and write down everything bad or all the negative thoughts because what we know from the research is if you focus on negative thoughts, you just have more of them. Take some time at the end of every day and think about what went well. Treating really, really depressed and suicidal people, um, it's interesting when you start doing the therapy and you say, I want you to sit down, I want you to write down you know, one good thing that happened today and they just can't think of it. It's just nothing seemed good, but as over a just a few weeks, they really start being able to notice all the neat stuff that happens every day. It's a focus. Meditate, pray, and reflect. Um, it's great working at a faith-based organization. We, we can promote that very openly and directly. 
Um, but there's a, a study that I did here at the hospital uh, about relaxation where people's blood pressure got better just from relaxing. Uh, get professional help if you need it. The last one I want to talk about is breathing. So we've got about a minute and a half. I want you to take, sit up straight. You can do any kind of deep breath and it helps, but here's what I really would like you to practice. One hand on your stomach, one hand on your chest. If you can, if you can take a deep breath with the diaphragm down here. It's like, it's like hitting a reset button. Some of you right now haven't done a diaphragmatic breath in so long, it's kind of like, <laughs> it's, just, it's just not working for you. If you take a deep breath, inhale for five seconds, exhale for five seconds, and pause and rest for five seconds, it's like hitting a reset button. Let's, let's do one breath together. Everybody, inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five. And just relax, rest for a few seconds. Do that about 15 times a day and you'll feel a lot better. All right, we got